and planting key crocs into keyboards for the ultimate hidden keylogger, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. If you've been watching for a while, you'll know that I like my gadgets, things like James Bond and other spy movies where you take these seemingly insignificant devices, watches, computer peripherals and whatnot, and they are more than meets the eye. They have capability that you wouldn't expect. And with the release of the new Hack 5 key croc, it reminded me that I've been wanting to get into uh, implants for quite some time. Thing like, things like bugs and uh, wiretaps and, well, in this case, key loggers. Now, the awesome thing about this is it does just plug in line with uh, whatever, you know, keyboard you want. And it'll go and clone the um, VIN and PID, and, you know, the device ID. And it'll appear to the computer as if it were the actual keyboard. And that's great, but, you know, if I've got a really nice clean setup, odds are I'll notice this is there. So how do we solve that problem? How do we make something truly, un well, maybe not truly undetectable, but a far more difficult to detect than just a device plugged in line with another device? Well, we can implant it. And specifically today, we're talking about this keyboard I modded, which has a key crock inside of it. Now, the cool thing about the skill sets I'll be showing off today is they don't just apply to this one build. You can go and use these same skills to do other things, like take this tiny USB hub and implant a rubber ducky inside of a computer mouse, as I've seen done before. You can go and put a land turtle directly inside of a PC case so that it's hard, more difficult to detect. Now we're getting a little more into the clandestine nation state kind of stuff that we all know and love, but the thing is this also has real world practical application. If you wanted to mod a mouse with extra macro buttons so that you could control lights or our uh, studio setup, or if you wanted to, well, in this case, we've got a full Linux quad-core computer inside of this keyboard. Now, I am a Windows user just because I do a lot of Adobe Premiere and, you know, editing and uh, CAD work and stuff like that. But I do need my Linux shells from time to time. And, yeah, WSL is cool and all, but I can have real bare metal right here inside of my keyboard. And this is something I've actually been using over the last few days like this in place of my normal Bluetooth keyboard. It's really useful. Now, this is one of the easier mods I've done in quite some time. And so I figured I'd do a little bit more of a walkthrough, not quite a full-on tutorial, but I'd uh, be a little more vo verbose with my details. It basically boils down to opening the device, desoldering the connectors, figuring out what the pinouts are and soldering the wires from the keyboard to it. And then after that, you need to secure everything, make a couple holes for the uh, arming button if you're so interested in having one of those. And then you put it all together, secure everything in place, and you've got a implant that is basically all but undetectable. Now, there are a couple things we got to worry about, such as thermals and a few other details we'll get into as we get it further into this video but it's actually a really simple mod. So I would highly suggest that if you're interested in these kind of gadgets and you wanna make one yourself, it's something you can totally do with very basic skill sets. Now do keep in mind that you're gonna void both the warranty of the keyboard and very likely the key croc. So be careful, but I mean, I wouldn't be here if I didn't like voiding warranties. So let's get started. First, let's talk about what makes a good host device. Well, you might be restricted if you're doing some kind of pen test op to the devices that you know that are being used inside of the environment. So if they're using a specific kind of keyboard or a specific brand mouse, you're probably going to want to stick with that. But if you do have the benefit of choosing a device, like say, I wanted to mail this keyboard to some IT department that doesn't have the strictest rules about bringing your own hardware in, well, the IT guy's probably going to see this, snag it for himself, and plug it into his own box. So I'm going to choose something that's easy to mod. In this case, I'm using a uh, Magic Force keyboard. There's no real affiliation or anything there. It's just that it's a keyboard I had around that has a pretty deep backplate on it because it's mechanical. And it also has a really useful uh, connector plate inside that we'll go into when we open this up. Now, there are some things to watch out for. In this case, how the case is held together. Thankfully, it's just screws, so you don't got to worry about breaking any clips. But there is one with that has a QC sticker covering it, as well as a couple of foot pads. Now, the QC sticker is an easy thing to fake. You could even remove it altogether, and they wouldn't notice it's missing in most cases. 
Now the foot pads you are going to want to be careful with so that they will adhere. As you can see, I even lost one in the process of this project. Some other good things is having a plastic back like this is very useful for when you go to mod it. You're, want to, you're going to want to drill holes and potentially cut pieces out so that you can install your device exactly where you want it. Now if you see here, there's a hole right there. This hole was already here. It was a vent hole or uh, something of the sort. I'm not entirely certain why that was there, but that hole has an arming button behind it. Now let's go ahead and open this thing up and show you exactly what I've done to it. It may look a little more complex on its face than it actually is. Now this keyboard, like I said, there's this really nice connector plate here that made this mod, I don't wanna say easier than it otherwise might've been, but it made it really convenient. Now you can see I have some super glue residue here. You wanna keep all the cables secure so that when you shake the device, you can't hear any rattling or nothing will come loose. And I've got some heat shrink here to keep all the cables managed. And here's the actual crockets, the key crock itself, and it's a little Wi-Fi antenna. Now something you could absolutely do is take a uh, SMA UFL pigtail extension and put a much more powerful antenna in here so that if you want to hit a uh, Wi-Fi hotspot that you got set up out in a van outside of your target facility or you know whatever hypo hypothetical situation we're talking about here, you can absolutely do that. The little in built-in antenna is just good if you uh, know what the access point password inside the facility is or there's some open Wi-Fi around that you can hop onto. Now this keyboard's cool because it is actually very straightforward to mod. This is this had short wires going directly from here to this little connector here. I didn't splice any of these, I just desoldered them. And if you look closely, it actually has the voltage and uh, various pinouts of this connector written on it. So that's one less diagram that I gotta look up or one less pinout I gotta figure out. Now I took the voltage and the ground and all those and the two data pins and wired those up to the USB pigtail area of the key crock because this is where the USB is coming in. Now you don't wanna get this backwards. I may or may not have done that uh, the first go around. However, you got the pinout coming in and then on the USB host port, you've got your device. Now you wanna go and twist your wires just like they are inside of a USB cable to help minimize interference. However, over these relatively short runs inside this case, it's pretty unlikely you're gonna have issues just due to uh, it being a slow speed device. Now, if you're putting this inside of like a a uh, USB hard drive or something weird like that, then you're gonna be a lot more concerned with interference because you've got higher data rates and you're more likely to have interference issues. But all in all, this is a pretty simple, just drop in, splice some wires and you're done. Now I did have to go and cut a couple of notches out of the plastic here. I did that, I was initially trying that with the Dremel, but I realized this plastic was brittle enough that I just snipped some of the uprights and bent the plastic over and it snapped perfectly. Now I did have one corner that I took a Dremel and just smoothed down the edges. Now you got a couple options for mounting as well. You can use hot glue, which is a safe bet, but I ended up using some very high bonding tape from 3M. This stuff's epic. Now you can get the little foam double-sided tape, but after you know a couple weeks or a couple months or varying humidity environments, you run into issues with that tape wearing out. Very high bonding tape is what they use to hold the bumpers of cars on. It is some pretty insane stuff and I love having a roll around. It's great for drone stuff too. And I'm actually just using the adhesive that was on the back of the antenna already. Now you can also use hot glue, super glue, VHB, whatever, depending on how permanent you want this mod to be. And that's basically the mod. It's super straightforward. At this point, you just set up the software how you want. In this case, I'm just running the stock example that comes on the key crock where you type hello and it finishes the sentence for you. You can do signature based stuff like this. You can monitor keystrokes live through C2. You can inject keystrokes. There's just so much possibility here. And at the end of the day, this is also a full Linux system. You could go and do something like put an RTL SDR server in here if you wanted, put an SDR in here. You can monitor theoretically GSM bands via the keyboard that you just mailed off to some facility somewhere and they think it's all just a normal keyboard and they plugged it into their computer and you're getting that RX goodness. Yeah, so would you like to see that? You wanna see me put a freaking RTL SDR inside of a keyboard too? Anyway, we're getting off track here. I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna do a bit of a diagram and I'll put some links to the, like the specific keyboard uh, down below. And I'll have a link over to a GitHub as well where you can see the schematic. So if you want to repeat this exact setup, you can. But it's really not all that complex. USB is very relatively fault tolerant. Just make sure 
you shield your ca cables and twist them so you get don't got to worry about interference and you're good. Now, if you want to pick up your own key crock, make sure to check out the Hack 5 shop down below. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack 5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.